Blessings to your friend. I'm Marcus Stevenson, Jr., and I am just delighted you have took this opportunity and this time to allow us to minister into your heart. I want to encourage you to stay tuned in. God has something very special He wants to minister into your life. As always, we don't take this moment for granted. Feel free to call someone, text somebody, maybe yell in the other room and tell them this ministry is on the air. You're special to God and you're special to us. Stay tuned in as you hear and see what God has planned for your life. But the manifestation, the revealing, follow me in the word of God, the revealing of the spirit is given. Ain't you tired of people talking about stuff that's not being seen? I look for the honest crowd. Ain't they show up at night? I'm tired of hearing about what God will do and don't see him do it. It is given. I wonder how people can read the same Bible I read and they make it seem like God don't give his spirit no more or God don't give manifestations no more. There are some people that believe that the apostles in the Bible were the last apostles ever and that healing stopped with them. There are some people that believe there are no more prophets. No one else should be prophesying. It. And you have people say, well, you ain't supposed to prophesy unless you got an interpreter. If the Holy Ghost is there, he's another one interpreter. If God don't know what he's saying, we always will pack up and go home. Amen? Just follow me a few minutes here. That little spirit ain't going to bother me. We got power over that thing. Watch this is given to every man, every person. I, I was at my daughter's, uh, you know, my youngest daughter's graduation. You know, these kids graduate every year now, don't they? I mean, it's just everybody getting graduation. I don't know. They just, we talk about that another time. But. And I heard them say something. I was laughing now at my little girl. They got up there and they said, I am somebody. And I said, man, they need to come preach for me one Sunday. Because most of the time, it's the church folks don't think they somebody. We think we messed up so bad that God is not willing to manifest his spirit in our life no more. And we think because of our past failures that that's the excuse why you can't see the manifestations of God in your life. But let me tell you something, that God manifests himself the most to draw you closer to him. And if you don't believe that, then you don't believe Acts the ninth chapter because Paul was a sinner. He was a murderer. But thank God that he manifested himself to him. Knocked him off his beast. Paul knew right then, this is somebody higher than me. Paul said, I'm the one who's going to be beating up, folks. You didn't knock me down. They always told me growing up, especially the hood folks, said, if you want to be the baddest person in the, in the hood, go find the biggest person on the block and knock them out. Yeah. Well, God's a G, ain't he? <laughs> knock Paul down. And Paul had to look up and say, who art thou, Lord? When God manifests himself, it causes you to realize that, hey, this God is real. Yeah. This God exists. He's not just some nighttime story that we tell our children, uh, just an excuse to give gifts out on Christmas. He is a real God, and he deals with real people, and he'll help fix real situations. That's why you got to know that God wants to manifest himself in your life, because some of y'all dealing with some real mess right now in your life. You deal with some real stuff, some stuff you know you got to have an ultimate supernatural being to help you through. And I guess what I'm trying to tell you is God is your helper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. One word can change your life. One word can change it. The doctor said you have cancer. Some of you all feel like that changed your life for the bad. But why is it bad words can change us, but good words can't change us? And let me tell you the best word or what you call a good word. Sometimes what we call a good word, you got to look at everything God gives you is a good word. Because every good and perfect gift. I thought y'all were going to talk to me. 
it comes from above and God is a word in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God what God was God still is he's the same today that he was yesterday and he's the same forevermore if he was a word then he's a word now so the moment you realize who God is you realize when God tell me I can be healed that that's a good word that comes from above and if that's what he said he hates at his word to perform it. Hallelujah. God ain't never lied. The Bible said he's not a man that he should lie. Hallelujah. The manifestation. Look your neighbor and say, God's going to reveal himself to me. I'll never forget it just like it was yesterday. I've been at several car accidents and several wrecks throughout my life. If you a prophet in here and you maybe you can discern I got a crooked nose because I had my nose broke about two or three times. Car accident had a drunk driver hit us coming back from my wife's uh, 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 hometown of Elaine, Arkansas. He was coming back from church. I tell you, the devil always go after me when I come back from church. I'm telling you, he been after me since I've been a kid. He has. And I, I can't tell you everything because time would permit, but I'll never forget it. 18-year-old, young boy, young kid, young man, driving down the road. And to make a long testimony short, my vehicle began to spin out of control. And when it began to spin out of control, if I'm lying, may God take my life. I heard a voice speak to me and say, look to your left side. And when I looked to my left side, there was a log coming through the glass the driver's side window glass, and I had just enough time to duck my head down. And when I got out of the vehicle, I didn't have a scratch on me. I didn't have a scrape on me. Didn't have a cut on me. But let me tell you something, I had a new heart. Somebody said, you were scared. Well, I must still be scared. Because that fear didn't last for a lot of years now. It wasn't fear by itself. It was the voice of God that spoke to me. It was he made manifest himself to me. I grew up in church and saw what God was doing. But yet in my mind, I had doubts and disbelief and unbelief. But one thing I realized is when you have a supernatural encounter or an experience for yourself, then how many know you ain't got to take nobody else's word for it? And that's what the devil wants. He wants you coming to church and see everybody else get an experience. How you sitting back judging what everybody else is doing. Yeah, you tell that devil, go back to hell. What God has for me is for me tonight. I'm going to get what God has for me. I need a miracle. I need salvation. I need deliverance. I need a healing. I need a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. If your neighbor say, it's something for me tonight. Don't get mad at him. Look at your neighbor and say, you can miss it if you want to. Hallelujah. Every person, stop selling yourself short. Every man to profit, to get an increase, to get an advantage, a benefit. You can fool yourself if you want to. I got a benefit having the spirit of God in my life. You say, ain't no peace in this world. It ain't no peace in this world, but it's some peace in this one. Yeah, I ain't talking to me. It's some peace in here. You know why? Because the Spirit dwells in us. And if you got the Spirit of God, God will make manifest peace to you in an unpeaceful situation. We talk about Daniel and the lions there, but put yourself in that story and stop getting so used to the story you forget it's a real life situation. Can you imagine being surrounded by lions? People getting ready to eat you up, licking their lips, getting ready to bite you up, and the man got enough peace, he realized, God, you're going to shut that lion's mouth because Daniel knew the Spirit of God is going to manifest himself in this unpeaceful situation. Yeah. Hallelujah. And that's what God doing right now. Some of you got an unpeaceful situation you in. And God said, you may not can change your situation, but I'm going to manifest my spirit inside of you. You're going to have peace in the midst of trouble. Even Jesus himself said this. He said, in the world you have tribulation, but in me you have peace.
peace. He said, be of good cheer. It's time to wipe your tears, sister. It's time to wipe your tears, brother. It's time to get a smile back. It's time to get joy back. It's time to get your dance back. It's time to get excitement back. And tell the devil you almost had me, but thanks be to God that the Spirit of God is manifesting himself in me and manifesting himself for me. Hallelujah. What you doing sad when you got the great I am inside of you? Notice what John said. He said, great is he that's within me. I know you don't believe this, why I ain't give it one go out. But I'm going to say it again. Great is he that's within me. So you've been talking to your neighbors so much, you don't think God got it for you. Talk to yourself. Say, I got something great in me. Then he that's in the world. Man, this world is full of foolishness. Liars, backbiters, cheaters. Quiet enough, little rock. Amen, people, you can't hardly trust. Some people, you, can't, you can be looking at them and still can't trust them. Why are you looking at them? They so slick, you be watching them, they still doing something slick. I'm telling you, they're just slick. Amen. Glory to God. To every man, to profit with all. Now, what is the manifestations of the Spirit? Hallelujah. Are you still following me? For to one is given by the Spirit. Woo! The word of what? To another, the what? Mm -hmm. and some of you children can follow me in the word. Because even they need a manifestation of the Spirit. Your children need peace in these schools. They need peace even when they're dealing with other people at the school. Amen. A word of wisdom. That's the manifestation of the Spirit. To another, the what? Word of knowledge. By what? You with me? To another, faith. By the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of what? Now, what I'm trying to figure out in all this, what I'm trying to figure out, why come people still believe in wisdom but don't believe in healing? Yeah. You ever know if people believe, well, God still use people to teach. He still use people to give wisdom, but when they come to that healing part. Right. See there? But the thing is that if it's given by the same spirit, then show me where the spirit of God has changed in all these years. Why do we still believe in good teaching but we don't believe in good healing. See that? Some of you having a hard time with that tonight. Why do you believe that God can give good teaching, but you don't believe God can still give prophecies? The devil wants you to get some of what God has, but he don't want you to have the whole thing. I always question why come the woman who had one little meal, one little morsel left in that pot while the prophet said, give it to me. Because I said, God, that seems unfair. Why would he take that woman's last? You could have just filled the barrel. And now forget God ministered to me, and I even heard another minister say this, and it quickened in my spirit. The reason why God wanted everything out the pot is because God wanted to be everything in the pot. If one something was left in the pot, then that means everything in there wasn't God. And that means she couldn't give God the full credit. See, a lot of times we want to give God some of the credit. So we'll listen to teaching. We'll listen to wisdom. But when God gives you a word of prophecy, I don't know. Well, why come you don't know about that? People here tell you, if I can't do nothing else, I know I can read now. And I just read for about five more minutes. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. God put these gifts of the Spirit in the church 
so we can get increase. I'm going to tell you something. God wants you to know your future. Y'all didn't hear me? God wants you to know your future. Woo! He wants you to know your future. Now, somebody said, I don't believe that. The whole time Jesus was down here, he constantly told the disciples about their future. He told Peter, he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And the very gates of hell came prevail against it. And he told Peter, you're going to have the keys to the kingdom. Hallelujah. He even told him about his future. He will study living, telling him one day I'm going to die. Can you imagine him? What's this man talking about? And Jesus said, yeah, I know the future. And I often ask God, why do you prophesy tell people the future? And all throughout Jesus' life, he told people, so when it happened, you'll know I told you so. Why is that? Because God's building your faith up. When God tell you what happened and you see it, ooh, God is real. God is, ooh, he, he is an existing God. Hallelujah. Feel more minutes here. It's going to be the greatest sweat you ever did. Watch this. We're going to let all the complainers stay home. Watch this. The Bible said, to another, the working of what? Wait a minute. The same spirit that gives teachings and wisdom, and, and, and the same spirit, you know, now he gives miracles. Look, your neighbor say, the spirit manifests miracles. To another, oh, oh, every prophet ain't lying. Some people have been so hurt by the liars that even when real prophets say something to you, I don't, ain't nobody prophet, I don't want to hear nobody say nothing to me. How are you going to tell God I talk to you? I hang out over here. Well, y'all ain't saying nothing. I said hang out over there. I'm going to hang out where I want it. I'll mess with y'all. And the enemy used those hurts to put a blockage in your spirit too. He'll use those hurts to make you second guess. But just because man may have missed, don't mean God missed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. A few more minutes. To another discerning of what? Now, everybody thinks they got that gift. Mm. But there are some people that can sit there and smile in your face and they can see right through you. They can know I don't trust that person. They lie. They deceitful. They can know they smiling, but God let me know that person dealing with some hell right now. We oftentimes get distracted by the outward appearance and fail to realize what God had to tell the prophet Samuel. God judged the inward part. God don't judge the outward man. And this is why we need the spirit in the church. That's some of you here right now. You judging real good in the outward. Looking around. She looked like this. He looked like that. Baby, don't you fool yourself. Don't go off looks by itself. You have to know what the spirit is saying. Sometimes people can look to be strong and be some of the weakest people in the congregation. Hallelujah. When you hear from the Spirit and you can discern, you'll know how to encourage that person. Know how to show them encouragement and show them love. Because sometimes the strongest looking people still need to feed off your strength. This is why we need the Spirit in the church. Watch this. Hallelujah. To another diver's kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongue. But all these work it that one. And what else? Now notice, all these. Somebody say, all these. He never picked and chose which ones to put in, which ones to take out. He said, all of these. 
And there's some of us who know the word of God, but you need that word to be manifested in your life. You just like good teachings. Thank God for that. But you need prophecy. You need miracles. You need healings in your life. And there's a flip side to that too. Some people don't never want to hear no good teaching. All they want is give me a word. Call me out. Tell me something. Amen? But you need everything God has for you. When I was growing up, I couldn't just eat the cookies. Mom and Dad told me eat all my food. They ain't like your new parents. Where the kids eat dessert first. I was growing up, we had to eat the food, then you got the desserts. Now we want what we want from God. But if you listen to me very carefully, the Spirit of God wants to manifest himself in every aspect of your life. Wisdom, faith, the discerning of spirit. How do you like to have discerning of spirits that will keep you from dating everybody? Because you know sometimes we'll change. Today is God. Next week, ah, oh, your Lord changes my No, God ain't changed. If you had a discerning of spirits, you would have saw that booger one number the mama's boy anyways. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Discern what business partners to connect with. Amen. God sees the end of a person before you met the beginning of them. And when you walk in the spirit, you won't even know yourself why you said no. But some inside you say, I don't feel comfortable with that. I'm going to say no to that decision. Because the spirit of God is leading you. And I'm going to tell you something. You ain't got to be a pastor to be led by the spirit. The Bible said as many as led by the spirits, they are the sons of God. God wants his children to be led by his spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. He said these all work that one and self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. One verse, Hebrews 4, verse 2. One verse. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God's going to make manifest itself in one of you all's lives. Some of you are going to leave here knowing, God, I had an encounter with you. And now I'm going to tell you something. With the Spirit in the place, you ain't got to make it up. You don't have to force it when the spirit's in the place. That's why the enemy fighting against this service so bad. He using all, I see so many distractions in here, seeing them everywhere, places I shouldn't even be seeing them from. You know why? Enemy using that stuff because he's trying to distract you from what the spirit of God wants to do. But when you stay focused on the spirit, I mean, no, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. No weapon. Watch this. Hebrews 4, verse number 2. Simple verse here. Simple word. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not what? Now notice God gives these manifestations to profit every man with all. But many times the word of God don't profit us, not because the Spirit of God didn't give a word for that season, but because we don't mix no faith with what God's saying. God tell you he's a healer, and yet you don't put faith in the healing. God tell you that he's a wise God to give you wisdom, and yet you put no faith in the teaching of wisdom that you receive. The word of God is not good enough by itself. We have to mix faith with what God says. That's why he said we walk by faith and not by sight. The Bible said, I believe it's in the book of Romans, he said whatsoever is not a faith is sin. When we begin to walk by faith, we're going to see the Spirit of God hit these places like never before. And that's why the devil is hindering so much because he don't want the Spirit of God to dwell rich in your life again. How many of y'all would stand in your mind and your heart with me tonight and say, God, I thank you for causing your Spirit to be with us. How many of y'all say, God, I need your Spirit again. I need your presence. Come on. How many of y'all say, God, I really need your presence in my life. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. I feel his presence in this place. I feel his presence in this place. Things that you find yourself in, you don't hardly even know how to explain how you got into them. And that's the regrets you have in your life, too, that have tried to bother you down. 
And because of some things you've been into, it almost like it created more problems and more issues. And sometimes you'll sit there and you almost get so hard on yourself that you'll go back into those things and try to relieve yourself. But the Lord said he's bringing deliverance to your house today. You need deliverance in your mind. Many, many years ago, I see you in the house of the Lord, and I see you serving the Lord, but I've seen a trap and a scheme. It's like the enemy had his mind set to take you out. And it's almost like the devil really wanted to take your life from you years ago. And I'm not trying to embarrass because God's a gentleman, but I see the devil wanted to use some habits to destroy you. But God's going to curse the root of some of those habits that tried to bring you out. There were some bad relationships, too, you got into. And there was some connection. It's like it from one hill to another hill to another hill. And it's almost like by the time you recover this, all things is going up. It's almost like you find yourself back in the valley. But the Lord said, yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you don't have to fear any more evil. God is with you today. And God's turning some things around. You need God to do something in your family, too. The enemy trying to play a guilt trip on you, even concerning some of your children as well, too. Sometimes you sit up and you grieve, and you, they don't know how much you really care and love. And sometimes you don't know how to go back and even apologize and tell them certain stuff. And the devil trying to make that stuff almost like he's stabbing your heart and beating you up. But God said, let that go. That day is over, young woman. God has forgiven you. That day is gone. And God, I also see God mending the sons back together. And I see God mending the whole family back together, too. And I see God hanging on some of the grandkids, too. And I see like a generation of curse God's turning around. And God said he's starting this thing today in your life. Some things are going to be different when you leave here. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody give a vibe. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, glory. I said, hey, glory. I said, hey, glory. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, you ain't crying because you're sad, are you? No. Why are you crying? Because I know exactly what you're talking about. Somebody give God a praise today. I want to personally thank you for allowing us to minister into your life. I'm sure something was seen, something was heard, that was a great blessing to you. And I want to encourage you to get this message in its entirety. You can go to the phone and call. You can go to our social media platform. Maybe send us a message. You can even text the number that you see on the screen. We want you to get this message in its entirety. And also, we would love to add you to our prayer list and to our mailing list. This connection is of the Lord. Not only did God connect us just for this one-time program, but I believe this connection should last for the remaining of our God-given life. Thank you so much for your love and support. And I want to encourage you to stay connected to our ministry. God bless you.